Hi, I'm Pedro Palandrani, Director of Research at GlobalX ETFs. It's a pleasure to meet the Mire Asset Securities Smart Money audience through this video. Today, we will dive into the mobility topic. Today, we'll be talking about a massive shift in the transportation industry and how EVs are expected to replace ICE vehicles. EVs are also reaching an inflection point as consumers, auto manufacturers, and governments accelerate the shift away from internal combustion engine vehicles and towards battery-powered vehicles. We will also talk about how with falling battery costs and improving charging infrastructure networks, consumers will soon have few reasons not to buy EVs. In addition, an expected transition to cheaper, more robust lithium iron phosphate batteries are expected to help EVs reach the mass market, while billions of dollars invested in charging infrastructure will help reduce range anxiety. However, auto manufacturers and governments must pay attention to supply chain risks as delayed investments in lithium mining could pose risks to widespread adoption of EVs. We tend to take a holistic approach when building our thematic strategies. In the EV industry, that means we're considering the universe of companies from upstream all the way to downstream companies. Upstream, we have lithium miners who extract this key raw material for EV batteries. Then moving downstream, we have raw material processing companies, cathode and anode production companies, cell manufacturing companies, and ultimately downstream companies such as EV manufacturers and other battery-powered electric mobility companies. Importantly, while the investment opportunity is global, much of the industry is concentrated in just a few regions. In lithium mining, most of the lithium comes from Australia and South America. The rest of the supply chain is then controlled by China, with 59% market share in chemical processing, 61% market share in cathode and anode production, 77% in lithium ion cell manufacturing, and also having the largest market share in EV cells. Battery technology has been one of the main drivers of the cost decline in EVs, and we would expect that to continue to be the case over the next years. Importantly, most batteries today are nickel-based. You have two different types, NMC or nickel manganese cobalt and NCA or nickel cobalt aluminum. However, the other type of batteries is iron-based with lithium iron phosphate, also called LFP, being the chemistry of choice. Today, nickel-based batteries have a market share of approximately two-thirds, leaving about one-third market share for iron-based batteries. However, we believe this trend is likely to reverse as EVs penetrate the mass market. In fact, we believe that EV costs could fall 24% by 2030, with 4% of the total cost decline coming from switching to LFP batteries. LFP batteries have several advantages over nickel-based batteries. They are 23 to 33% cheaper, they can be charged to 100%, they're safer due to thermal stability, and they also have a greater average lifespan than nickel-based batteries. The drawback is that LFP batteries tend to exhibit lower energy density, resulting in lower EV range. Yet, since we expect a massive charging infrastructure network rollout, the so-called range anxiety could potentially be a thing of the past. However, this will change with the Congress approval of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act with $7.5 billion dedicated to build EV charging stations. This investment could increase the number of charging stations from 50,000 today to over 300,000 once the capital has been fully deployed. Once that happens, 
we estimate that only three states would fall short on the number of charging stations needed to support mainstream adoption of EVs. Elsewhere, Europe has 150,000 public EV charging stations currently, and it is expected that over 2 million more will be built by 2030. In China, there are 1 million EV charging stations, while in Japan there are roughly 30,000. But the numbers are ex just expected to keep increasing over the next years. Yes, most OEMs plan to invest heavily in electrification and increase their EV offerings with well over 100 new models set to come to market over the coming decade. For example, in March 2022, Kia announced that it will launch at least two battery EVs per year starting in 2023. The company's goal is to have a lineup of 14 battery EVs by 2027, including three passenger cars eight SUVs, and three pickup commercial models. Also in March, Hyundai announced plans to introduce 17 new battery EV models by 2030. In the US, Ford announced that it is restructuring to separate its EV and ICE business. Under its new EV unit called Ford Model E, the company plans to produce 2 million EVs annually by 2026. EVs are expected to represent over 90% of the incremental growth demand for lithium. By looking at some figures, in 2021, lithium demand was approximately 400,000 metric tons. This number is expected to be 2.5 million metric tons by 2030, or five times 2021 demand. However, underinvestment in lithium mining could pose risk to EVs. In fact, we expect a lithium deficit in 2022 with conditions worsening over the next several years. This is because bringing lithium to market takes several years. New lithium mining operations can take between three to five years to complete, making the forecasted undersupply an issue that needs immediate attention. Thanks for having me today. I hope today's interview helped you get a better understanding of the opportunities in the EV industry. If you have any questions, you can visit our website www.globalxetfs.com or our social media accounts. Thank you for watching. <laughs>